Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is all about this system that I'm building right here. It is currently being called Hotbox. My wife came up with that name as this is her computer that I am building for her. Now, I want to start off before I get into anything else with a big thank you to my sponsors for this build. I would not be able to do this without them. So first off, EK, EK Water Blocks provided all of the water cooling components that are in here. Also, uh, Gigabyte provided the uh, Z170N Wi-Fi motherboard that's in there, little, little mini ITX board, as well as uh, the GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming graphics card, which has currently been outfitted with a water block. Uh, also, from HyperX, I had three products, two SSDs, and the uh, 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. And then finally, Fractal Design pr provided the Define Nano S case that this whole system is housed in. Now, it might be a little obvious to you guys who are familiar with building water-cooled uh, computers, but this is a work in progress. And for this video, this is as far as I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna jump back in time and share it with you guys. Uh, first off, all the parts that are in here, and then second off, my assembly process so far, at least as much as it, of it as I was able to document. And um, honestly, I am happy to even have gotten this far at this point. I had a very late la night last night, but I'm excited to move forward. Once I finish shooting this video right now, I'm gonna move on to the next step. And Lord knows I don't have enough distractions as it is coming in. This isn't even the only distraction right here. I also need to be continuing my work on benchmarking and doing a review for this card. There's other things that I can't even tell you about. Before I run down any of the parts or anything like that though, I want to say two quick things specifically about this build based on some feedback I've already got, because I've already done uh, this build air-cooled and did some initial testing and, and everything like that. First is, this is not a normal build. This is a unique build. It is unique to me. It is something actually that I have been working on in collaboration with my wife. She's had a lot of uh, input and feedback, mainly on the color choices and that kind of thing. But this is not really a build that I would go out and recommend somebody, hey, here, get all these same parts that I did and build this system. Um, because of, well, many different factors, the sponsorship not being least among those, but also um, just the fact that I'm using a motherboard that is not necessarily high-end. It's uh, about a 150-ish dollar motherboard from Gigabyte. But when I told them what I was doing, even they were like, are you sure you want to overclock on that motherboard? But I chose it for different reasons. The aesthetics was a big uh, reason. There's not a whole lot of colors going on. Also, it had uh, both Wi-Fi and M.2 built in there, but it's only got a three-phase power delivery system. I've helped that out a little bit by adding some of my own uh, heat sinks onto there, but it's not going to be the best overclocking motherboard. I'm still confident that it's going to get me an overclock that's uh, within the realms of what I'm looking for with this chip, 6600K, which I'm hoping to get to about 4.6 or 4.7 gigahertz. But I guess what I'm saying is if somebody was building a ground up custom water cooled system, it's not necessarily the motherboard I would have chosen. Uh, EVGA has some options that I think provide a little bit more power, so if you, you can go for more high end overclocks. But for my purposes, I think that is actually working out just fine. The second thing I wanted to point out is that this is an orange build, and for anyone who might want to jump in here and say, oh, you're copying Jay's two cents with his Skunk Works build, or oh, obviously this is a Linus Tech Tips theme build, I just want to point out, I have been building orange themed computers for my wife for quite a few years now. In fact, her past two systems, which I have documented on the channel, have all been orange themed, so i got a little bit of history there. Anyway, enough of my rambling, let's actually take a look at all of the parts, the final parts list for what's going on inside Hotbox. Now since I already built this whole system out with air cooling, there are some parts that I am keeping and some parts that I have left behind. The parts I'm keeping are of course the Core i5 6600K CPU from Intel, it's quad core with hyper threading, and I've already overclocked this to 4.6 or 4.7 gigahertz. I also have the Gigabyte Z170N Wi-Fi motherboard, as well as the Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti G1 gaming GPU. The case of course I'm also still keeping, that's the Fractal Define Nano S. And then uh, new products that I'm adding are from HyperX, the storage configuration of a 960 gig HyperX Savage SATA SSD. I'm gonna be pairing that with a 480 gig HyperX Predator M.2 SSD. This one is not NVMe, but it's still very, very fast. Much faster read and write speeds than you get with standard SATA. And uh, I think about one and a half terabytes of SSD storage should be plenty for this build. 
For memory, I have a 32 gig kit of HyperX DDR4 memory. This is 2400 speed, two sticks, 16 gigs each. That means I got 32 gigs, even though I have only two DIMM slots. So I'm pretty happy with the memory configuration. Now those parts as well as the EK stuff was sponsored, but I do have some non-sponsored stuff that I've thrown in here as well, starting off with the custom paracord sleeved power supply cables. These were done by Ensourced Customs. That's E-N, Ensourced. And he does a fabulous job. Uh, Joey over there, thank you so much for your hard work on these. This is a much better option than what I did with the Arctic Panther where I did it myself and it took several weeks. Joey got the order done within a week from when I ordered them. Uh, I was able to custom choose all the colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm really happy with the work so far. Again, it's paracord and it comes with these uh, little, little cable guides here that are 3D printed to keep everything lined up really nice and makes it much easier for cable training. For power supply, I decided it was really important to have as much extra room in the case as possible. So I went with the Silverstone Strider Platinum. This is a 750 watt version. Basically wanted to make sure I had a 140 millimeter length power supply and this one fits the bill. They do have 150 uh, millimeter length titanium versions that I was considering, but honestly, I'd much rather have the extra space and I'm already happy that I went with that choice since it came in handy. I do have a late product edition. That's the NZXT Hue Plus. Uh, I decided to throw that in the 3.5 inch drive bay slot behind the motherboard tray. And I think it's gonna be a great option because it provides RGB lighting and a lot of control via the connection with the operating system and the Hue Plus software. NZXT cam software, I believe. And finally, look at this massive pile of parts from EK, all in their colorful EK boxes. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take these out of their boxes one at a time so you can get a closer look, because I feel like I haven't really done that with my water cooling parts so far. So EK sent me a laundry list of stuff. So let's start off with the blocks from EK. The CPU block is the EK Supremacy Evo and the nickel finish, and this also has uh, the clear plexi cap on top, so you're gonna be able to see the liquid flowing through, and the liquid should be orange colored eventually. Um, for the graphics card, we have the EK FC980 GTX 980 Ti WinForce 3 version. This is specially made for Gigabyte's WinForce 3 version custom designed PCB for the 980 Ti. Uh, got the nickel finish on this, also with the clear uh, see-through panel. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see much because it's, it's facing downwards, but it's still in there and I'll get some low angle shots of it so you can appreciate that a little bit. Also comes with a back, well, it comes with a sold separately back plate, but you wanna get that as well. I got it in black, because it's nice and clean and it looks sexy. You gotta have a reservoir, so this is the EK Res X3, uh, 110 millimeter version, very tiny. I think this is actually one of the smallest reservoirs that EK sells, but hey, it's a tiny case. For the pump, I have an EK X-Top Revo D5 PWM. This is gonna be a very quiet pump and it's also got that uh, plexi cover on it so you can see the liquid flowing through. Uh, I did get an assortment of fittings and adapters. So I have like a T-splitter. I got a bunch of fit uh, 16 millimeter fittings. That's to go along with the 16 millimeter PETG tubing um, that I got uh, several two-piece kits of. It's nice and clear and it comes individually wrapped to make sure it will not get scratched up. Uh, moving on with the fittings though, I also have uh, some extenders, I got a ball valve for a shutoff, so I'm gonna use that for a fill port and drain port. Uh, some angled fittings, as well as some extenders and rotary fittings. We gotta have airflow over the radiator, so I have five EK Vardar F4 120ER 2200 RPM fans, uh, two for each radiator, plus one for exhaust at the back. Rounding things out, I got the DIY kit. This is kind of necessary. Um, well, they give you a saw in there, which is useful for cutting the PETG, PETG tubing, but you also get the little uh, silicone inserts. You gotta put that inside the tubing before you bend it. And uh, it's very necessary to have the um, insert that's the right size for the tubing. So that was a big reason why I went with this kit. And then finally, we have two radiators. These are EK Coolstream SE240s. So they're uh, slim, they're only about 27 millimeters thick. Each one will support 220 millimeter fans. And of course I have just enough room for both, one at the top and one at the front. It is now high time that I get things underway and start assembling this system. But before I even do that, I need to disassemble the system, the, the existing system, or at least remove the stuff that was there and, and get it out of the way. That includes the old power supply, as well as just pulling some of the old components out. Pretty much I gotta strip this down to, to, to nothing. But uh, for preparation, because I wanna make sure that I have everything ready to go before I actually start installing anything, and you gotta do step A and step B before you move to step C, I started with flushing my radiators, a step that is often 
forgotten when it comes to new water cooling parts, but it's a good idea, a good standard practice, uh, just to run uh, just standard tap water through the radiators for a good 15 to 20 minutes, and then finish off by flushing it out with some distilled water that uh, you would use for your loop. I also had to prep the PSU that included heat gunning off the label on the side as well as the label on the back near the modular plugs. And then uh, it has like an all black finish except for these single two PCI Express power plugs, the modular plugs on the power supply side. For some reason these are blue. Um, they're not really going to stand out much, but I decided I wanted to cover it up instead. I started off by going the quick and get a root by black penning it. I wasn't quite satisfied with the results, so I ended up grabbing some paints and using a paintbrush and just using some matte paint around the edge. Again, this was not the cleanest job at all, but fortunately after installation, it is blocked a lot by the um, cables that are uh, above it. So it's mainly just there so that you don't see any blue peeking through and uh, it turned out okay. Next, I was finally able to get on with installation. Um, for this section of installation, I'm pretty much doing everything that you have seen here since I started this video, except for the um, fittings and the tubing. So the tube bending is what will be coming in part two. So I started off by getting the power supply installed down at the bottom, which I'm happy to say fits nicely and gives you lots of extra space since it's so short. I installed the radiators next. I got that front radiator installed first because I needed to determine uh, where I was gonna be able to put the fittings. Wanted to do the fittings at the top because it would make bleeding easier after I filled the loop. That wasn't gonna leave me enough room though, so I ended up putting them at the bottom. It's still okay to have them down there. It will just make bleeding a bit more of a pain in the ass. The top radiator, I kind of set there, but I left floating because um, there was some more stuff I needed to install and plug in behind it, but this was able to allow me to figure out exactly how much room I had and that yes, I would be able to fit both of these radiators as well all, as all five fans, including this exhaust fan at the back. From there, I went on to prepare the motherboard that included installing the HyperX memory, of course, getting that M.2 uh, Predator SSD installed at the back in the M.2 slot, and then finally the CPU water block installation, the EK Supremacy Evo, uh, was fairly straightforward. I've only done this a couple times with EK's blocks, but they have very clear instructions, and the hardware is all really top-notch, so everything fits very flush and very cleanly and um, I wasn't too worried as I was tightening everything down to get nice compression on my CPU heat spreader. With the motherboard prepped and ready to go, I dropped it into the case. Fortunately, my IO shield was already there, and then I was able to connect up the top row of fan and power plugs for the motherboard. Really important to get this stuff in there first, because once the radiator is installed in front of it, it's really difficult to get at those. Um, with the finished radiators installed, I went on to doing some initial cable routing, specifically for these fans. Uh, I got a Swift Tech fan hub that I've installed at the back here, so I can have all fans routed over to that, and then that single fan plug uh, just for RPMs plugged into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. That way all the fans in the system will ramp up or down based on the CPU temperature. After that, it was time to get the GPU water block and back plate installed. Again, EK has very clear instructions here. If you've never done this before, um, I recommend checking out some of Jay's Two Senses videos because he has quite a few videos on disassembling and reassembling these. Uh, again, not very difficult, and thankfully the G1 gaming graphics card from Gigabyte also wasn't too hard as far as removing the air cooling assembly on that. It also shaves a lot of size off of the card. It makes it a couple inches shorter, and it made me realize finally like, oh yes, this might actually work after getting that on because there's just a lot less space taken up by the, uh, the liquid cooled graphics card, and it's gonna give me a lot more room to work with over in this area for um, actually routing those PETG tubes. With the GPU water block set up, I was able to drop that assembly into the case and get it securely fastened in place. And that kind of moved me on to the final stage of planning, which was, well, one, getting these custom sleeve cables actually installed and routed to where they're supposed to be so I could kind of figure out where I have room for those and uh, where they're going to be routed to. The 24 pin up at the top actually had a very, very tight squeeze up against the uh, fans from the radiator, but fortunately I was able to get it in there. And everything else, I'm super happy with how it looks. So that moved me on to getting the uh, reservoir and the pump set up where they should be so I could actually figure out, all right, my tubing is going to go from here to here and here to here and all that good stuff. So let me grab the camera and show you guys a closer look and uh, tell you some of my thoughts on this build since we're so close to it being finished. So here is Hotbox in all of her glory at this particular point in time and um, yeah, again, 240 at the top, 240 at the front, two intake fans here at the front as well as two exhaust fans here at the top, one exhaust fan there at the, at the back, 
Mini ITX board, 980 Ti, uh, everything is looking pretty pretty. Now, um, apart from the cabling, which again, I, I think is looking pretty damn nice. Um, this is, I wish I had more space for this one at the top because I would have liked that one to have a little bit more flourish to be honest. Um, but you know, I think it's getting the job done. And actually, what ended up happening is this, uh, this the two uh, four pins for the uh, CPU, I'm sorry, the two eight pins for the, <laughs> the two eight pins for the graphics card uh, are much more visible, but um, I think it looks pretty nice. This is a big swoosh right here. Um, some folks were saying this might have done better if I had gone back behind the pump, but honestly the pump I didn't even have in there. I didn't know it was going to be exactly where it is until now or uh, late last night. So I, it was difficult to plan that. So I had to make this long enough that I have enough room to go back behind the motherboard tray and then come back about out again and connect to the power supply. So there that is. Now the kind of last minute, or not last minute, but the solutions I had to find last night for a couple things were involving, um, well first off this pump down here because it has an inlet which is actually right there at the center and the outlet which um, was originally up here on top. Fortunately I read the documentation and I discovered that you can rotate, you can kind of loosen the housing that this is in and rotate the whole thing. So I was able to have that uh, outlet come out the side here and using a couple fixed fittings, I have already connected that up to this radiator. That was one of my biggest uh, problems to deal with was this tight fit down there and how I was going to get the in into the in on here that has, has to come from the, the reservoir up top, where the out was going to go and how it was going to get over here and then how I was gonna manage this, that this radiator had, had to have an in and out, whereas it's down here wedged in the corner with the pump and everything. So by rotating that, I was able to connect that up directly. Um, the reservoir, the out is gonna come from out here and go down here, you know, with an angle in it or something. And then uh, from this res or from this uh, radiator, it's gonna come out and go up around and into the, the uh, graphics card, out of the graphics card into the top radiator out of that top radiator into the CPU, and out of the CPU and over into the reservoir. That was my other dilemma was with this reservoir, because I had it oriented vertically, like as you probably see a little bit more commonly, and um, I was basically going to have these two fittings on the front, so like here and here, but I decided, you know what, I really was having a difficult time figuring out where I was going to put a fill port, a fill port or a drain port, and that's specifically why I got this little cutoff, this little ball valve here. I realized, you know, I can flip this, do 90 degrees. That allows me to use the top inlet as an actual inlet. So that's going to come from the CPU. That's going to fill this here. And then um, the outlet's going to be right here. And that's, like I said, going to go down to the pump. And then that allows me to have this little capped off thing right here, which is going to be a fill port. So I can just, uh, you know, twist that to turn it off, uncap this, put a little fitting on there with, with some tubing or whatever, fill up my reservoir, and then fill up the loop. Um, draining is probably going to be a bit, a bit more of a challenge. I'm going to have to like tilt it forward towards me to put it on its side. But again, I'm hoping since it's so tiny and boxy that that will work. Anyway guys, I better shut up and actually get to, to work on the, the next step of this. Stay tuned for that coming soon. Stay tuned for other wonderful videos that I can't even tell you about coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm so excited to be actually getting work done on this build. And uh, yeah, hey, don't forget to hit the, hit the thumbs up button too. Hit the, give me a like. If you enjoyed this video, if you're excited to see the final build, and we'll see you next time on Paul's Hardware. You gotta have a reservoir, so I have the EK, uh, is it X-rays? Hero, stop looking your your nutsack. Stop looking the remainders of your nutsack.